Hey all, welcome to home school and we are with class 11 chemistry series. We started with the first chapter basic concepts of chemistry and under that we have covered the basic introduction about the matter, classification of matter and nature of matter and in this video we are starting up with properties of matter. Properties of matter and their measurements. Okay, their measurements how to measure uh, the properties of matter fine and coming to the properties or characters of matter these properties can be divided into two types one is physical properties and the other one is chemical properties clear so let us understand these terms what do you mean by a physical properties Say physical properties are those properties which can be measured. These properties can be easily measured and they can be observed without changing the composition of matter. This is very much important to understand. They are observed without changing, changing the composition composition of matter clear say for example uh, color color is an example of physical property odor odor in the sense smell boiling point density all these are examples i mean volume all these will come under physical properties See, uh, when you want to observe the color of a compound, will the composition of matter change? Say, for example, this is a chalk piece. Uh, its composition is calcium carbonate. Say, this chalk piece is made up of calcium carbonate, isn't it? Okay. See, if I have to observe its color, uh, I can just observe this without changing the composition. It, uh, it's, it's not that uh, these calcium carbon and oxygen ratio would change. Right? Say uh, simply without changing the composition, uh, the property that you can observe is what we call physical properties. Okay? Fine. And coming to the chemical properties. See, these chemical properties are observed during chemical change. Okay, a chemical change has to take place to observe the chemical properties and during the chemical change what happens is composition will change. Composition will change. Definitely, if a chalk piece is undergoing some reaction, definitely what happens? Uh, the ratio of calcium, carbon and oxygen in the compound would change. Calcium and oxygen would become something else. It is no more a calcium now. It would have converted into something else when this chalk piece undergoes a reaction. Isn't it? See, that is the difference between physical properties and chemical properties. Say so during physical properties, our uh, composition of matter will not change and they are measurable properties. You can measure them. Okay. So now what we are going to do is we are learning more about this physical properties. Okay. I said physical properties are measurable properties. So what are the properties you call them as physical properties and how do you measure? We measure them with the help of SI system. Isn't it? So all physical properties can come under seven base physical quantities and let us learn what are the seven base physical quantities and their units. Okay. So I am talking about seven base physical quantities. So why, why are we learning these seven base physical quantities? Because all the physical properties that we are going to measure about the matter will fall under these seven base physical quantities introduced by SI system of measurements. Okay, fine. So what are they? The first one is mass which can be indicated with the letter M and its unit and its unit is kg. Yes or no? Kg in the sense kilogram. Clear? And the second uh, physical quantity is length. 
so length we can uh, indicate with small l and its unit is meter meter can be indicated with small m isn't it and the next one is time time is another base quantity which can be indicated with small t time has a unit called seconds seconds right indicated as small s and the second one is electric current electric current uh, which is indicated with i and its unit is ampere ampere a and the next one thermodynamic temperature thermo dynamic temperature it's a new word for you don't worry you will understand its meaning little later and uh, uh, its unit is kelvin okay and the next one is amount of substance amount of substance is another uh, uh, physical quantity measured with the help of a unit mole and luminous intensity luminous intensity is another uh, physical quantity where its unit is candela right so these are the seven physical quantities using which we can measure the physical properties of matter clear and along with the basic physical quantities there are some physical quantities like density volume temperature you know all these are derived from these physical quantities and let us try to understand those derived physical quantities also and their units see the very very important derived physical quantity is volume and this volume is very very important in the chemistry because you know most of the gases would combine and that combination is expressed or described with the help of a physical quantity called volume and we say uh, this much cm cube of gas has combined with this much cm cube of gas so volume is the most important uh, measurable physical property that we use to describe the matter clear fine so volume and the unit of volume is meter cube but meter cube is not a commonly used unit instead of meter cube we can use a unit called liter okay say for example 10 liters of water i took and i am adding 20 liters of acid you know volume is the most necessary measurable property here say so liter is the commonly used unit here and now we all know a uh, little conversions 1 liter is equal to 1000 ml isn't it or i can say 1 liter is equal to uh, 1000 cm cube which is equal to 1 decimeter cube 1 dm cube you know you have to remember all these conversions and these conversions will help us uh, during numericals okay say so i am giving you the conversions also here clear so that is about the volume and the next derived unit is density so what do you mean by a density which is indicated with small d here density is nothing but mass by volume okay and what is its unit mass unit is kg volumes unit is meter cube so kg per meter cube you can write this as kg per meter cube but kg per meter cube is not a commonly used unit in the field of chemistry we normally use uh, the unit as gram per centimeter cube so density is unit is what density is unit is gram per centimeter cube clear so this is density and coming to the next derived unit that is temperature see guys temperature can be measured with the help of three scales and we call them as degree centigrade degree fahrenheit and kelvin kelvin scale okay and here each and every uh, scale of temperature is related to one another and now uh, let us see the relation relation between 
degree centigrade and degree Fahrenheit. So the relation is Fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree centigrade plus 32. Okay. And uh, let us see the relationship between degree centigrade and Kelvin. Say Kelvin is equal to degree centigrade plus 273. Isn't it? Say all these are not new for us. We have already studied this in our previous classes. So I am just, uh, uh, you know, revising you. It's just like a recap for you. Okay. Try to understand the relationship between degree Fahrenheit and degree centigrade, Kelvin and degree centigrade. So these are the three scales of temperature. And the next important derived unit, derived physical quantity is pressure. So pressure is the most important uh, uh, derived unit or with the help of this particular pressure, we can describe about the matter, clear? And especially the gases can be described with the help of this physical property that is pressure. Fine, what is pressure? Pressure is nothing but force by area. So the SI unit of pressure is Newton per meter square and pressure can also be mentioned uh, in the units like ATM or TOR. Okay. And let us see a conversion here. 1 ATM is always equal to 101.325 Pascals. Okay. And which is again equal to 760 TOR. See, this is the conversion factor that you can use for pressure. If you want to convert ATM into Pascal, Pascal into ATM or ATM into TOR, TOR into ATM, you know, this is what we can use. You know, you will come to know its use uh, during uh, problem solving in various chapters. Say, I told you, you know, this chapter is a very basic thing. Uh, all the necessary information we will learn in the chapter using which we can uh, understand the next chapters or we use all these things in the next coming chapters. Okay. So now try to remember uh, what do you mean by temperature? What are the three scales? How you can convert them? Pressures, SI units, what, how you can convert from one unit to another unit, density, volume and etc. So all these are derived units. Why do we call them as derived units? Because these are the units derived from, taken from, obtained from the seven base physical quantities like mass uh, and then length, time, all that we studied, no seven quantities. From them, we can extract, we can obtain these physical quantities. That's why we call them as derived physical quantities. And also in case of numericals, uh, both in the physics and chemistry, you know, we use certain prefixes. Okay, because we deal with very small numbers. Say we don't do the reactions uh, liters together or uh, kgs together. We will conduct the reactions or atoms would combine uh, in a very minute quantities. Clear? So that's the reason there is a necessary thing to learn about the prefixes. So let us see what are the general prefixes that we can use in chemistry. See guys, these are the prefixes used in SI system. Say for example, 10 to the power minus 1 can be called with deci, right? Say uh, some volume of a matter I am measuring and I got the answer as uh, 6 decimeter cube, right? Say what do you mean by 6 decimeter cube? 6 into D. Deci, deci in the sense 10 to the power of minus 1 meter cube. So that means uh, it is exactly 0 0.6 meter cube, right? So this 0 0.6 meter cube, you can write it as 6 deci meter cube. Clear everybody? So the, the meaning of the word small d, small d in the sense what? Deci, which is nothing but 10 to the power of minus 1. Okay, like that we, we can also see centimeter is a commonly used unit. Yes, say if I measure a volume of some matter which I got the answer as 6 centimeter cube. So what do you mean by this small c? Meter cube is a standard SI unit for volume. We have learnt that. Say what is the meaning of this c? 
C in the sense 6 into centi. Centi means what? 10 to the power of minus 2. So, exact answer is 6 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meter cube. Like that. So, instead of writing 10 to the power of minus 2, we can use the word centi. Uh, it can be indicated with the letter small c. Clear? So, millimeter like that micrometer. Say for example, I have written 10 nanometer. So, what do you mean by 10 nanometer here? See, it's a very small unit. Small n. n means nano. Isn't it? See, small n. Nano. That means exactly your answer is 10 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter. This is what the meaning of 10 nanometer. Clear? Say, such a small number. 0 0.0080s after that you will get 1. Isn't it? Say such a small numbers we will deal in chemistry. Say we can't uh, write it as 0 point so many zeros. It takes lots of space. Say we are writing it in a small quantities. I mean we are taking the help of a prefixes and then we are writing the numbers. Isn't it? Say that's why we are learning these prefixes. Right? Say you, you all know the atoms. You know atoms and all are very small in size that we measure them in picometers. Say hydrogen atom has a size of 300 picometer. Can you tell me what do you mean by 300 picometer? That means it is 300 into pico. Pico means what? You see here pico. P in the sense pico. Pico means what? 10 to the power of minus 12 meters. See? 300 into 10 to the power of minus 12. Imagine how small the number is. 0 0.000110 zeros. After that your 300 comes. Say such a small number. Isn't it? So many zeros. See that's the reason we take the help of prefixes. Right? Say what do you mean by uh, micrometer? 1 micrometer means what? 1 into micro means uh, 10 to the power of minus 6 meter, right? So, this is how we can use the prefixes. Say so we say 100 kg. What do you mean by 100 kg? It is actually 100 into k in the sense what? Kilo. Kilo means what? 10 to the power of 3 gram. You know, this is what the meaning of 100 kg. Clear? Say so, uh, such a big numbers or such a small numbers can be indicated with the help of prefixes. So, here you must understand what do you mean by hecto. Hecto is 10 to the power of 2. Kilo means 10 to the power of 3. Mega uh, indicated with capital M, 10 to the power of 6. Giga, 10 to the power of 9. Terra, 10 to the power of 12. Pita, 10 to the power of 15. Likewise, Deci, 10 power minus 1. 10 power minus 2 is centi. 10 power minus 3 is milli. 10 power minus 6 is micro, 10 power minus 9 is nano, 10 power minus 12 is pico, 10 power minus 15 is femto. So, these meanings are very much important to understand, right? So, that's all about the physical quantities uh, and the different types of physical quantities, derived physical quantities along with the unit. Say because these are the measurable properties. Using these physical quantities, you know, we can describe the nature of matter. So, very, very important concept, especially the units uh, for our quantities you have to remember and their conversions. See, all these we will use during numericals in the next coming chapters. So, that's the reason we have learnt this in the chapter. Clear? So, this is one part of a chapter. And coming to the next concept, it is scientific notation and we will discuss about that in the next video. Till then, take care and do subscribe our channel to learn the concepts in an easiest way and in a detailed way. Thank you so much. <music>